Hello, I want to welcome you to the Rochester Parent Orientation Webinar. My name is Janet T. Petrola. I'm the Camp Manager, and I'm going to be walking you through tonight's presentation where we're going to help parents prepare themselves and their daughters for attending day and or overnight camp. So let's get started. The webinar objectives that we're going to cover is what do our day and overnight camp programs look like? How can parents prepare themselves and their daughters for a positive camp experience? We're going to show you how easy it is to register for an amazing summer experience. And we're going to describe the importance of the camp confirmation packet. All of you should have received our 2013 summer camp guide either in the mail or you have downloaded it from our Girl Scout website as a PDF. If you have not received a catalog and would like one, please contact our office and we'll be happy to send one to you. So let's look at some general information about Girl Scout Summer Camp. Our camp programs follow our mission and our mission is building girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. Along with our mission, each camp has camp goals. Our goals are at Girl Scout Camp, we will encourage independence and emotional growth of all campers. At camp, we'll nurture and develop the self-confidence and self-esteem of all campers. And at Girl Scout Camp, we'll nurture and develop personal accomplishments and personal responsibility of all campers. So who can attend a Girl Scout summer camp? Well, day camps, we serve girls entering kindergarten in the fall of 2013 through 8th grade. Why overnight camps serve girls entering grade 1 in the fall of 2013 through 12th grade. Girls do not have to be currently participating in Girl Scouts in order to go to Girl Scout camp. However, girls must become members of Girl Scouts when registering for summer camp. So if your daughter is already currently registered Girl Scout and is attending camp, but she'd like her friend to go and she is not registered, not a problem. She can register for summer camp and also register to become a member at the same time. So let's take a look at where our camps are located. We have three day camps, Camp Windy Meadows in Cambria, just outside Lockport, Camp Seven Hills in Lakeside, which is in Holland, New York, and Camp Piperwood in Parrington, just outside of Rochester, which we'll be talking more about tonight. Our resident camps are Camp Seven Hills Goodyear in Holland, and Camp Timbercrest in Randolph, New York. So we look at our camp programming, all of our camps base their programming on Girl Scout leadership experience, which focuses on the three keys of leadership where girls discover, connect, and take action. The process of girl-led, learning by doing, and cooperative learning are shared throughout the Girl Scout summer camp experience. In girl-led, girls choose what they want to do. Our counselors are there to help guide, but girls decide what they want to do and how they want to plan their camp week. Learning by doing is focusing on hands-on team building activities and cooperative learning teaches them how to problem solve independently and within a group. Our journey It's Your Story Tell It will be focused on this summer at camp. Our journeys are aligned with state and national curriculum standards. So let's take a look at our day camp programs girls can really do anything at camp. As I said, our day camps we have Camp Windy Meadows in Cambria, Seven Hills in Lakeside, and Piperwood in Parrington. All of our day camps run Monday through Friday 9 to 4. There's before care and after care available from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. for an additional fee. Or busing is available at all three of our day camps for an additional fee as well. Bus aides are available on the bus to help supervise and guide our campers while on the bus. The bus aides are actual counselors that are hired to work the summer and will be participating with your daughter throughout the day in different unit activities. So if we take a look at Camp Piperwood, it will be running July 8th to August 2nd and is under the direction of Mary Beth Sullivan. So what are some of the things you'll see at Piperwood? This year, new, brand new ropes course, 
A full ropes course program will be implemented this summer at Piper Wood, so we'll have new team building initiative games, a full low course, and a full high course program that girls can participate in. We also will be doing tie-dyeing. Tie-dyeing is a very popular program that takes place at day camp. It will happen once a week. Archery. Splash pad, you'll see the picture in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. A very popular water activity that we utilize at Piperwood. Girls will be participating in the splash pad every day, pending weather, of course. Outdoor cooking is another popular activity. Girls will be doing an outdoor cooking once a week. Also have an opportunity to do snacks if they so choose. But they absolutely will be doing an outdoor cook experience every Thursday. Tie-dye, as I said, popular activity. You will be receiving a letter from the camp director or assistant director at the beginning of the week on Monday uh, when your daughter comes home, letting you know any type of additional items that they might need for the week to help prepare what's going on for the theme. One of those items is a tie-dye item. Um, as you can see from the picture, girls really love it. It's an opportunity for them to show off what they made, and the girls really like to wear what they've made, uh, usually the last day of uh, on Friday to show off uh, how their tie-dye uh, t-shirt uh, had come out. So what types of programs will you see at Piperwood? Each week is a different theme. We have uh, anywhere from international exploration, such as My Passport to the World, to theater arts uh, like lights, camera, action, and creative crafts called Crazy for Crafts. These are all different themes that take place throughout the summer. Uh, the girls will concentrate on those particular themes of that week. You will also have general camp programs, and, uh, hiking, um, to camp songs, to different type of games that will take place as well. We do a parent program every Thursday night. Again, that's based on the theme. The parent program is from 7 to 8. Parents come out. They get a chance to tour the facilities, take a look at their daughter's unit. The girls get to show off what some of the things that they worked on during the week. Um, and then the girls will be putting on a skit and a song uh, for the parents as well. The parent program then ends, and then their overnight program is followed by the parent program. New this year, girls entering first grade and up can participate. This is a great stepping stone program to help prepare girls for our resident camp experience. Girls will be staying in overnight unit in Florence Fryer in the platform tent unit. They'll be doing um, a campfire, uh, different types of programming. Girls staying over will all receive breakfast the next day. New this year for Piperwood, lunch and a uh, snack is provided every day uh, or you may choose to have your daughter pack her own lunch whatever you find more convenient but know that lunch is provided every day at no additional charge here's an example of the daily schedule at Piperwood before care starts at 8 followed by our flag ceremony at 9 parents are more than welcome to attend the flag ceremony if they like followed by morning activity and this could be a number of things going on that the girls choose that they want to do from preparing and planning for their uh, cookout preparing and planning for their Thursday evening skit uh, hiking arts and crafts doing archery ropes course splash pad it could be a number of things lunch starts at quarter to twelve followed by afternoon activities uh, and snack in the afternoon Closing uh, flag starts at 3.50. Again, parents are more than welcome to, to join. Followed by the bus departs at 4 and aftercare ends at 5.30. Day camp, uh, we travel as a group at day camp. We have two to three counselors in a unit. Uh, and they travel together uh, as a group throughout the day. Now, if girls want to run to the restroom or uh, run to... Um, a different activity per se they can with buddies um, but majority of the time the girls travel together as a unit okay so if we look at what to pack for Camp Piperwood okay we ask that you please uh, pack in a backpack and that you provide a bathing suit towel and water shoes because your girls will be participating in the splash pad as I said every day You'll need a jacket, sweatshirt, or rain gear because uh, it can get chilly and you want to make sure that your daughter is prepared. 
Insect repellent and sunscreen is always important. Please pack a water bottle, a sturdy water bottle, for your daughter to utilize throughout uh, the day. A mess kit will be used uh, for their Thursday evening program. And lunch, as I said, uh, is optional. If you so choose that she wants to bring a lunch, she can. And again, we ask that you please label everything uh, to help us cut down on lost and found. You'll see a more in-depth packing list in the confirmation packet. This is just a sampling and a highlight of the most important essentials that she'll need. So now that we've talked a little bit about day camp and talk, told you about some of the programming packing lists, let's take a look at resident camp. Our resident camp, Camp Seven Hills in Goodyear, and then we have Camp Timbercrest located in Randolph. Both of our overnight programs run Sunday starting at 1 and will end Friday night ending at about 7.30 in the evening. Bus transportation is available for Timbercrest from Buffalo, uh, area as well as Rochester Batavia area. So Camp Seven Hills will run June 30th to August 9th. Open house is June 26th and it's under the direction of Carolyn Magner. While Timbercrest will operate June 30th to August 9th located in Randolph, New York, open house is Sunday June 23rd and it's under the direction of Mariah Kramer. So if we look at some of the programs that you would see at resident camp, both camps, just like day camp, offer tie-dyeing. Tie-dyeing is a very popular activity at any of our camps, and we encourage girls to bring items that they would like to dye tie-dye throughout the week. Some will bring towels, some will bring pillowcases, t-shirts, shorts, pajamas, whatever they can find that they tie-dye. Uh, they really look forward to doing that, and they have an opportunity to show off their artwork at the end of the week. We also offer archery at both of our resident camps. Again, just like day camp, very popular. Horseback running takes place at both uh, facilities. Timbercrest will concentrate on western riding, which is more concentration on trails and rodeo formation. And Seven Hills will concentrate more on English riding, which is more concentration on the seat and precision and how to handle um, footing. Ropes course was also available. Seven Hills is a full ropes course program for team initiative games to low course to high course. Timbercrest has what we call portable ropes course uh, availability. So they have the low course uh, activities and they're portable, which means you can move them from site to site. Outdoor cooking takes place at both facilities. Again, a very popular activity. There are some programs that specialize more in the outdoor cooking than other programs, such as Survivor Girl, where they will do a lot of outdoor cooking. Each girl will have an opportunity to do one type or some type of outdoor cooking, um, and that'll take place weekly at resident camp. You'll see the water trampoline here on your left. That is at Timbercrest. We have a 32 plus acre lake, Kaiser Lake at Timbercrest, where we have the water trampoline, we do swimming, we do sailing, kayaking, rowboating, canoeing, and paddle boating. Or Seven Hills, we have a swimming pool for our swimming, and we have a small lake where we do kayaking, paddle boating, and canoeing. So if we take a look at some of the programs you'll see for younger girls, We've got the Horse Lovers Club at Seven Hills and Timbercrest. This is an introductory program for horses uh, for our younger girls. So it's an opportunity for them to go and visit the horses, see the stables, to get a pony ride, and really get their feet wet and get them ready for the full uh, horse program experience starting fourth grade and up. Paws and Claws is a, a brownie program at Seven Hills that talks about how to take care of animals um, locally. And also, this is accompanied by a day trip to the Buffalo Zoo. Grossology is more of our science program. Girls are going to learn how to make different slimes and goos and wobbly gunk. And, and it's a very popular and fun activity. And this takes place at Seven Hills and Timbercrest. Followed by Spa Week, Ropes Challenge Course, as I said, at Seven Hills and Timbercrest. And both Seven Hills and Timbercrest offer mini sessions Sunday through Wednesday night one-week programs Sunday to Friday night or two-week programs. 
So if you look at some of the programs that are available for older girls, Tent Trail, Canoe, and Kayak is offered at both facilities. This is a stepping stone introduction to our off-site camping programs where girls learn to pitch tents, backpack, hike, compassing, a little bit of canoeing and kayaking, a little bit of everything to get them ready for more advanced trips. Wonderful World of Service Animals will take place at Timbercrest where this is teaches girls about animals that help serve uh, people with disabilities. This is followed by a day trip to the Niagara Aquarium. We have Sailor's Paradise for those that want to learn more about sailing. Duct Tape Art which is new this year, very popular art program. Pastry Chefs for those that want more of a culinary uh, experience will work directly with our head cooks at camp. And then we have our horseback riding as I said Western and English riding. Some of our specialty programs include Extreme Tree Adventures. It takes place at Seven Hills. It's a two-week program. The first week is spent at Seven Hills doing our Ropes Challenge Course program, where the second week takes them down to the Adirondacks, where they do the Adirondack Extreme Adventure Course, where these are Ropes Course elements in the trees. So it's a tier program where the first level, level one, starts out very easy, followed by up to five to the sixth level, which is extremely hard. This is a program we ran a couple years ago. The girls absolutely loved it, came back raving, and we are running it again this year. And we are almost closed out on that program, so if your daughter is something you might be interested in, you might uh, want to get her registered sooner than later. The Vertical Challenge is our rope climbing program at Tim uh, Timbercrest, where uh, a Wilderness Adventure Houghton College uh, vendor will come out pick the girls up and take them to Rattlesnake Point Conservation on, in Milton, Ontario, where they'll do rock climbing, uh, the rock faces of Rattlesnake Point Conservation Area. Under the Sea is our scuba diving program, very popular program, it's two weeks. The first week is spent at Seven Hills doing classroom and pool instruction, and the second week is spent at Windmill Quarry doing open water dives. Upon successful completion of the program, girls actually earn their certification in scuba diving where they can scuba dive anywhere in the world. So this is an example of our daily schedule at Resident Camp. It starts out with polar bear swim for those girls who want to go in an early morning swim, either in the pool or the, or the lake, followed by hoppers, which are table setters to get ready for breakfast in the morning, by flag, uh, uh, quarter to eight followed by breakfast then we go into unit activities in the morning up to lunch at noon and everybody gets a rest time from one to two it's a great time especially for those younger girls to get some rest in and get them ready for the afternoon afternoon activity takes place between two and five thirty followed a snack in between then we've got flag dinner at six and then the evening is uh, taken by Camper's Choice or All Camp, where girls have an opportunity, again, to choose different activities that they'd like to do. Or an All Camp is where the entire camp gets together and participates in a wide type of uh, activity or theme. We try to get quiet time for our younger girls by 8.30, followed by our older girls at 9 o'clock. Sunday, we open our week with an opening campfire where everybody comes together, introduces themselves, everybody meets the staff, we go over rules and regulations, sing songs, do a little bit of, do some skits. And Thursday night, we close everything out where everybody says goodbye and they share what they've learned for the week and they share stories um, and everybody gets, gets a chance to say goodbye. Resident camp, we have a little bit more independence where girls travel with buddies from activity to activity. In any given unit, you'll see four to six counselors within a unit. Uh, the girls, with the exception of our Brownie Lodges, and, or our lodges you'll see in just a minute, our staff have separate sleeping quarters uh, within the unit. Okay, but every unit will have four to six counselors. So if we look at how to pack for resident camp, as you'll see later on in the, the webinar, we have platform tent or cabin tent units and space is limited so we ask that parents please do not pack trunks or bulky luggage. We ask that you pack your daughter's belongings in a duffel bag as they're more versatile and can fit easily under the beds. 
We also suggest packing your daughter's clothes in Ziploc bags. It's perfect for those younger campers where you can pack an entire outfit in a Ziploc bag and label it. So all they have to do is just pull out the bag and they're good to go. This is a limited uh, list of items. The full packing list is in the parent confirmation packet. But these are just some items that you'd want to make sure your daughter has when packing to come to camp. Bathing suit, towel, and water shoes uh, as swimming um, will be done every day. Jacket, sweatshirt, and rain gear because it does get cool at night and in the morning. Uh, insect repellent and sunscreen, of course. Water bottle, again, we definitely encourage hydration throughout the day. There are water stations throughout uh, the camp. Mask kit for those cookouts that she'll be participating in. And highlight a warm sleeping bag. Please don't send your daughter to camp with a slumber bag. Um, I know those slumber bags are very popular, the ones with the daisy and princesses on them, but they don't keep your daughter warm. You're definitely going to want a warm sleeping bag where at least it reaches 20 degrees or more um, at night. So you want something that is going to keep them warm. Okay, Sturdy shoes, boots, and or sneakers throughout the day. Of course, they're PJs, and optional is a stuffed toy, but... You'll see the full packing list, as I said, in the confirmation packet. It's important that you read through it. And please make sure that you label everything. Again, we want to cut back on lost and found. If your daughter's participating in the horse program, you want loose-fitting long pants, boots with a hard heel and toe, um, at least a three-quarter inch heel. Work boots are acceptable. Please no hiking boots or sneakers. Uh, we ask for the heel because it prevents their foot from slipping through the stirrups. Uh, and again, please label everything. If you have more questions on the horse program and additional items to be brought to camp for the horse program, please call our office and we'll be happy to talk to you. What not to pack? Well, please don't pack any smelling uh, deodorants, toothpaste. Please don't pack any food or gum of anything of that sort. We really don't want raccoons in the unit, and this can definitely draw raccoons, which makes it quite messy in the unit. Please don't send your daughter to camp with anything of value, uh, no jewelry, no expensive shoes, clothing, iPods or MP3 uh, players, cell phones or digital cameras are not allowed, pocket knives and or permanent markers. We ask that you please do not pack your daughter's medication in her bag as you will be needing to hand those in on opening day. And again, you'll see the full list of items I'm not to bring in the confirmation packet. So where will your daughter be sleeping? Well, if you look at the top right-hand corner of the page, you'll see a lodge. That's our brownie lodge. And the bottom left-hand corner of the screen is Jackman Lodge. Our lodges are meant for our younger girls, grades 1 to 3. They'll be sleeping in the lodges uh, participating in resident camp. Our counselors will be sleeping in the lodges with them. Now if you look at the top left-hand corner of your screen and the bottom right-hand corner, those are platform tent units and or permanent tent units. You'll find those both at Seven Hills and Timbercrest. They sleep four or five to a unit or sleeping tent and this is for grades 4 and up. Now counselors will have their separate sleeping tent but within the unit and those will be identified by a lantern or light outside the tent. Now again we look at steps to prevent homesickness. Homesickness does occur more at resident camp than day camp uh, but these are steps that we ask parents to take a look at. The full list, again, is the camp confirmation packet. It's important to have your child practice being away from home prior to attending camp. So we have them stay at a friend's house or a relative's home for at least a night or a weekend to help get them used to being away from home. We also suggest using a calendar to show them that the time spent at camp is not an eternity, but actually a very short amount of time and goes by rather quickly. We ask that you please don't promise your daughter that she can call home when she is at camp because this really does intensify the homesick situation. If your daughter is having a difficult time, the camp staff will contact you and together we'll work on a plan to help make sure your daughter has a positive camp experience. 
If for any reason that you're concerned about what's going on with your daughter at camp, if she's adjusting well, please call camp and ask to speak to the director or assistant director, and they will work with you and talk with you and let you know how your daughter is progressing. Again, you'll see the full list of how to prevent homesickness in the camp confirmation packet. So we've talked a lot about day camp and what happens at day camp, schedules, programming. Same thing with resident camp. We've gone over programming, schedules, what a typical day looks like. We haven't really touched upon staff. So let's take a minute now to talk about staff. All seasonal camp staff will receive a criminal and sexual background check through the state and federal. All staff are participating in week-long training, and during that time, they're going to receive training in ages and stages of children and child development, risk management. They're going to go over the Girl Scout mission and goals. They go over the Girl Scout journey program, the seasonal staff personnel policies. They are trained in child abuse recognition and reporting, as well as the effects of social media. They all receive certification in first aid and CPR through the American Red Cross, including training and certification in epinephrine auto-injector. They receive training in behavior management of children, bullying prevention, conflict resolution, emergency procedures, opening day procedures, and always camp songs. It's a pretty intense week and a lot gets covered. All staff, regardless of whether they return or new, must fill out a staff application must accompany three references, and all are interviewed. So you might say, well, I've learned a lot about camp and I think my daughter would like to go. Is it easy to register? It absolutely is easy. So if you click on the camp link, you'll see here, register here for summer camp. So you simply click on that link and that takes you right to our eBiz page. And you'll see on the left hand side there, you'll see this camp activities so you click on that link and that brings you to our 2013 summer camp page where you'll be able to look for the camp that you're interested in for your daughter and pick out the program that your daughter's interested in participating in you simply fill out the application right online and you'll receive an invoice saying that you've successfully registered for camp whether you're registering online or we're just registering through paper you will receive an invoice and then that invoice will show you what your balance is and will also show you a link and how to access the summer camp confirmation packet okay financial assistance is financial assistance available absolutely financial assistance is available for all girls of Girl Scouts of Western New York including those girls who register to become a member at the time that they're registering for camp our application is available in the camp guide and is also on our website. Unfortunately though, you cannot register for camp uh, for financial aid through eBiz. So therefore, you'll have to do a paper registration for financial assistance and mail that in. Okay. Social services uh, is available for day and resident camp and there's information on the financial aid form to, to fill that out. Parents that need assistance uh, filling out the financial aid form or questions on social services, please call our office and we'll be happy to assist you. So we talked about the confirmation packet. Where do you find it? Again, under the camp link, you'll see right there on your left camp confirmation packet. Simply click on that link and it takes you to the page whether your daughter's going to day camp and or resident camp. You simply pick the camp that she's going to and you click on the camp confirmation packet. We highly suggest in, uh, that parents please download this packet and print it out. It has all the information that you're going to need to help prepare yourself and your daughter for camp. It has the full packing list that we've talked about. It has the full list of how to prevent homesickness. It has directions and a map and how to get to camp. It has phone numbers to the camp. It has my contact information, emails, um, it talks about what opening day procedures look like, what time to be at camp for resident camp, what time to pick your daughter up from resident camp. So there's a lot of information that is very pertinent um, and you'll find very useful. So we really highly suggest that you download this packet and keep it with you. One of the things that you will also see in the Camp Confirmation Packet new this year is Camp Doc. 
Camp Doc is a new electronic health record system that we're using this year. No more will you need to bring any forms to camp. Everything that you will need for your daughter for camp will be in Camp Doc. Once you've registered, as I said, you are going to receive an email from Camp Doc letting you know that you have registered your daughter for camp. It says, please click on the link. You'll need to create an account and a password. Once you successfully create those accounts and passwords, it'll take you to your daughter's account where it'll indicate the camp that your daughter registered for, the program she signed up for, and you'll simply go through the steps filling out your daughter's health form. You can fill it out as your leisure. You don't have to do it all in one setting. So you can save it and go back to it any time. You will continue to receive emails though as a reminder that you still have missing information that needs to be filled out. All information must be completed at least two weeks before your daughter's to go to camp. Now you receive, you'll see it in the section of Camp Docs as a PDF, the physical exam form for resident camp and the medication form. The medication form is needed for both day and resident camp. The physical form is needed just for resident camp. It's important that you print those out, take those forms to your daughter's doctor, have them filled out and signed, and then you're going to scan and upload them back into your daughter's account. If you have difficulty with scanning, and are unable to, please let us know. We'll be happy to scan those documents for you and upload them right into your daughter's account. You will also see the camper pickup form as part of the camp doc form this year. Again, make it easier for you, the parent. You no longer need to bring any forms to camp. Everything will be through camp doc. So let's look at some general camp information. When is my camp payment due? Well, if you registered by February uh, of this year to June 5th, your final payment is due on June 5th. That's not to say you can't register after June. You most certainly can. When you do register for camp, full payment must accompany it upon registration. Can you visit camp? Yes. We have open houses that take place this year. Camp um, Piperwood. Open House will take place Monday, July 1st from 7 to 8.30. Camp Timbercrest will take place Sunday, June 23rd from 12.30 to 4.30. And Seven Hills will take place Wednesday, June 26th from 5.30 to 9. Seven Hills and Timbercrest will be offering a barbecue and or picnic, which are both optional. Those tickets are available um, online or through the catalog. And you may purchase tickets at the door if you so like. Tours will be going on throughout the evening. It's a great opportunity to come and visit family with family and friends. Visit the staff. Have your questions answered. See where your children will be staying and participating in activities. And also visit the camp store. Medication at camp. As we said earlier, please don't pack your med daughter's medication in her bag. You'll need to hand that in with the nurse. You want to make sure that it is clearly labeled and it must be in its original container, either prescribed or over the counter. The label must contain the actual label of the medication and your daughter's name. So if your daughter's not taking any prescribed medication but she's taking over the counter, you must make sure it has its original label of the over counter medication and your daughter's name on it. If the medication that your daughter's taken is not on her individual, individual medical form, our nurse is unable to administer the medication. It must be on your daughter's medication form and signed by her doctor in order for our nurse to administer any type of medication. Now as a hint for those children that are not taking over the counter or excuse me, not taking prescribed drugs and are going to resident camp, I highly suggest to parents that they have the over-the-counter medication signed off by the doctor. This means that if your daughter comes to the nurse complaining of a headache or stomach ache and the doctor did sign off, the nurse is able to give her something for the pain. If your daughter's doctor did not sign off, then the nurse is unable to give her anything. So I strongly and highly suggest to parents to please have the doctor sign off on the medication form, be it prescribed and or over the counter. 
What forms are required for camp? You are no longer need to bring any forms to camp. Everything is done through Camp Doc. Are camp stores available? Yes and no. Our resident camps have stores available and girls can put money on account on Sunday when they come in. And their stores will be open for parents on Sunday on opening day and Friday on closing day. And girls will be able to go to the store every day. Day camp will not have stores this year. However, parents can purchase a t-shirt and day camp patch. And that is indicated on the camp application form. The t-shirt is $8 and the patch is $2. If you haven't registered or purchased a t-shirt and you want to do so, please contact the camp registrar and she'll be able to help you purchase and indicate one for your daughter if you'd like a shirt and or a patch. Can my daughter and her friend be in the same unit? Yes, there is a place on the application that asks can my daughter be placed with a friend. Please indicate the name of the friend and then usually we say please have your daughter's friend indicate your daughter's name. We do everything we can to make sure that the request is made at day camp. Sometimes we're not able to accommodate depending on the age but Normally, we're able to meet uh, most of the uh, requests that are out there. For resident camp, as long as your daughter's friend is in the same program and signed up for the same program, they will be in the same unit. However, we do not guarantee sleeping units. Those are on a first come, first serve. What we suggest to parents is that they come at registration day at the same time, which, which guarantees or better chance of getting a sleeping unit together. So that does it for our parent orientation webinar from Rochester. We hope that we've answered all of your questions tonight. As I reminded you parents earlier, please make sure that you download the confirmation packet. It has all the general information that we talked about tonight and more. If you need more information or need someone to talk to, please contact our office at 888-837-6410. You can ask for extension 6063. That's my direct extension, Janet T. Petrillo, Camp Manager, and I'll be happy to assist you. Thank you, everyone, and we hope to see you all at camp this summer.